It's always a delight to follow Sister Logan. <laughs> this, um, you know, if, if it is true, and, and I believe it is, that to know God is to have life, whom to know is eternal life, then it would behoove us to know God. <laughs> Obviously, Christ is the, the fullness. He's the, the express image of the Father. So if you're going to know God, we, we, we learned this in the gospel, you're going to have to come in contact with Christ. You're going to have to know Christ. And um, in this series of messages that I've, I've wanted to preach is, I want, I, see, we're living in a time and a day when it seems as though God has been pushed into the background. The man has, has come up with all kinds of reasons and all kinds of solutions, and actually some men are actually uh, suggesting that they can do things that only God can do. So I thought it would be good to refresh our memory in some of these attributes of God. Now, these are everything that we're going to say God said, if it's, it's in the scripture, it's in the volume of the book. We're not, we, don't, we don't have a private revelation here. But see, we don't need one. God's given us an ample revelation of who he is. And um, relevant for the time, for who we are now, as we walk this pilgrimage to glory, it, 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 we can grow. We can grow in our understanding of who God is. These... um. I, I like the way Sister Logan started it off. Um, you know, only God can do what God does. I mean, if you can do it, if somebody said, if you can do it, then do it. But see, you can't do what God does. One, in order for you to have an eternal purpose, you'd have to be eternal. You'd have to be able to live from age to age to age to age. God can. God is like, remember Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They can do something. We, we read in the beginning chapters of the scripture, God wants his creation to know I'm God. I can say, let there be light and there'll be light. God's the only one that can do that. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that are saying things like that. They're saying, you can declare your future. They're just liars. They can't change one thing. God can. God changes everything. He says, behold, I make all things new. Amen. Another text that kind of highlights the same idea as Isaiah 40, 28. says, hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding." If God hadn't revealed who he is, we would never know it. His ways are past finding out. You can't just look out there and look at a tree and say, I know I understand God. I'm sorry. It just, just, God hasn't designed it that way. In this series of messages, I'm asking God to pro for this to be a product, productive in the examination of the revelation of God as it appears in scriptures. And I've already said some of this, but it, it, I don't, I'm not seeking to know more than what God's revealed. I'm seeking to understand what he has revealed. And, um, you know, it's through the proclamation of the word, it's, it's as men see some element of, of what God is in the person of Christ Jesus that they preach it, they, they share it, in other words, they, they reveal it, they show it, that others hear and are brought, you know, they, they, oh, I never thought of it like that. Why? Because someone talked about it, someone said it, someone rehearsed it. So that's what I'm asking God to do. Is that, and also, also I want to look at, there's, there's another element of the revelation of God, and it's as, it's as God works in his people. See, he takes the revelation, people imbibe it, they they see it and it affects them. They do something that they glorify God, in other words. They do. Oh, this is, a, this is a missing element in the day we're living in today. The doing of the word of God. The, the actually going out and actually living for God. 
Now, I thought as I begin this series, I wanted to, to pay honor to a sister in the scriptures. Her name is Hannah, or Samuel's mother. And this is an example of how God has revealed himself in, in a person. Now, we can see that God only not, not only did God give her a child. Yeah, but what have you, what's God created for you lately? God gave her a child. This is what God did for her. She wasn't like ignorant about this. She asked for it. Remember, she went and she asked for this child. God gives it to her. He creates in her this child. Now, I don't mean created her like the virgin birth. Don't get me wrong in here. But see, that God can, God can create peace. So, see, he, this, is, this is of God. We know from the scriptures that God did this. He made this productive. He, he opened her womb and he gave her a child. He also can, um, he didn't just give her a child, he gave her a pure heart. We're going to know this by what she says with her mouth. She perceived what had happened to her. Remember now, she, God gives her a child, and so she, what does she do? She turns around and she gives it back to the Lord. That, see, what, how, could, how could this be? This is her only child now. This is the child that she loves. God gave it to her. What does she do? She gives it. I'm lending it back to the Lord for as long as he lives. So these are, you know, she had a, you might say she had an excellent spirit in her, didn't she? She saw things the way they really were. This child's not mine. This child belongs to the Lord, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it back to him. Now, the text I'm going to read is, comes right after when she drops off her child to Eli. Now, this has got to be a tender moment in a mother's heart. I mean, here she's, she's giving up her son to the Lord. She's giving him. And she says something here in um, 1 Samuel chapter 2 that I thought was worth saying at this time. Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoice in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more exceeding proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. She knows exactly what she's doing. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. She's got to see these comparisons that Hannah's making. These things have escaped men in our, in our present generation. Yes. Hannah saw it. They that were full have hired themselves out for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is wax feeble. Hannah knows that God can work with nothing. He can work with nothing. A woman can be barren, unable. Uh, unable of herself to do anything to change this situation, God can just speak a word. Yeah. Just speak a word and change everything. Why? Because God is a creator. This is why. <laughs> People, uh, you know, we've talked about what's God going to do in the ages to come. Well, I suppose he's going to create something. He's a creator is what he is. And he didn't stop creating when he got done creating the world. This was just like the foundation it's like the stage on which he was going to start. You want to see creative power? <laughs> you don't need to look any further than the scriptures. It's full of God creating things, making a way here, changing a man's mind here. These, oh, this is God. This is God working. Now, this whole encounter that Hannah had with God has proven to be a very productive time for Hannah. She was not ignorant of what was going on in her and around her. She had, she had the eyes to be able to behold and perceive. She was like a woman ahead of her time, so to speak. She was able to perceive these things. And it was because she had a pure heart that she was able to do it. God revealed things to this sister that many in our time have just missed. They just missed it. Hannah has to some degree... Being able to see or consider the sovereignty of God, that God, these things are weighed into balance by God himself. He works or creates certain situations so that he can observe 
what men will do. She goes on, there is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Oh, I already read that. It was good again anyway. The Lord killeth and maketh alive and bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. This is what Hannah said now. This isn't some great prophet that was sent. This is Hannah. Uh, I tell you, this is a great, great thing. Hannah knows that there, there's not anybody that can, can, can take another life unless it's approved by God. Now, this is the, ultimately the Lord's the one that's in charge of these things. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. See, if you, if you have had a good day, then give God the praise. He is the one that's allowed it. He is the one that's, that's as it were, has, has, has given you this day. He, he, make, he makes things happen. He, he is your, has your feet been kept? Have they? Because if they have, the Lord did that. The Lord keeps the feet of his saints. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of the heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Now she's talking about Christ there. God's going to say, God's going to fix this situation that we're in. And he did. But see, Hannah, throughout this whole thing, she, she knew it, that God was the one that did all this. And all the contemplation for all the months that she must have carried this child, she's considering these things. Look at what God's done to me. Who am I that God would work this wonderful thing? And so she determined, of course, she determined to give him to the Lord before she ever got him. Remember? You look back there. There's a lot of implications that men today should be drawing from this revelation that Hannah saw. Hannah, Hannah saw it. She's faithful to say it then. And um, anyone who, who they, can, they can learn a lot from these words from Sister Hannah. She's living back in the twilight age. We're living in the day of the open heavens. Amen. Oh, I tell you, when we consider the beginning of the world, we really, we really have to take God's word for it because there wasn't anybody else there to tell you the truth. So, I mean, God's given us a record of what happened and we're not going to go through every single day because that's the, uh, that isn't the point of this message. I, I, I want us to see that God's the creator. God's the one that initiates everything. Nothing, nothing happens outside of his, 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 um, his authority. He is the absolute authority over all things. This is his world. He made it, and we find out he made it for a reason. God just not, God doesn't, experiment this isn't our god he doesn't he he made everything for a specific purpose and a reason and um all things are working together he's working all things together for the good of the his people now the apostle john gives us a wonderful encapsulation of the first chapter of genesis just in one verse i mean he, he just like you want to boil it all down listen to john in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now that's Genesis chapter 1. This, this is God. He was the one that was in the beginning. He was the one that initiated. Why, did, why was the world made? Because God, God wanted a world made so he could work out. These attributes to reveal his long sufferingness and his mercy and his grace. All these things, these are of God. No man thought this up. In him was life. Now, how would you know that had not God made a, 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 a situation or a circumstance where he could, he could divulge this? How would you know that God was merciful if there wasn't somebody that needed mercy? How, how would you know that? God's in charge of these things. If anything is created, 
then God's been there. God is the creator. He's the one that, that, that does these kind of things. Revelation 4.11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure are they created. So not only had God created all things, we even know why now. They were created for his pleasure. He's the creator. We really do not have the option of believing anything else concerning the origin of species. See, man says, no, I have, a, I have an opinion here. Well, just close your mouth because God's revealed that he created all things. We don't have, we don't have a right to a different opinion here. God's revealed that he, in the beginning he created the heavens and the earth. So any man that comes up with something different than that, they're just wrong. God created everything that we see, he, and he did it. We know, we know from John that he did it through the word. Now, God hasn't really, God hasn't changed this procedure. Every single thing God's ever done has been through the word. And then the word, see, in our, in our own salvation, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and the word brought, see, God did, God worked salvation, but he did it through Christ. The creation of the world was done the same way. He said, let there be light, and there was light. And the Holy Spirit was brooding over the, the, the whole entire God has been involved in every step of what God's done. And the same thing in salvation. How would you know how spiritual things worked had he not made a world? See, God's done it all right. He's, he's done everything well. God just didn't, you know, some people think that he did, but God just didn't start up the creation and then step back and see how everything would work out. That isn't how God is. That isn't what God's done. You know, God is in a part of every operation of the world, every, every intricate thing that's going on. If God didn't, if Christ and God didn't hold things together, the whole planet would fly apart. We, you know, scientists, they can't figure out how. They, they come up with some electromagnetic stuff. It's God the one that makes things all things consist. God's directly involved with every aspect of the physical creation. He is. You don't have to. You don't have to get up in the morning and say, oh, did I get the sun up? Oh, oh, it's already up. Didn't have anything to do with that at all. But God was there. See, these things, they sound elementary, but see, this is God. God's doing this. He's, he's controlling all these things. Now, if God can do that, he's telling us something. If I can create the world and I can keep it orderly and functional, I can take care of you. Amen. So don't go to some man and ask him to do it. Come to me. Because I'm able to do it. I'm able to keep those things that you're committing against me, uh, unto me against that day. I'm able to remember on the day of judgment that you denied ungodliness and worldly lusts. I'm able to do that. You, you come to me. I'm the creator. David, he wasn't ashamed of this. David didn't say, well, God doesn't create anymore. He said, create in me a clean heart. That's what he asked God to do. Do this for me. I need a clean heart, and I'm asking you to create one in me because I don't have one. What God do? He, get, he did it. He did it for David. Colossians 3 8 says, Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with the seeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. That new man that you got inside of you? God created it in you. The creator. You've already got something that's brand new. It's of the new world. It's of the new realm. It's been born of God, and it's in you. Yeah, I'm a walking testimony that God's a creator. It's true. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers, or all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Colossians 1.14, and that's the way it is. Amen. I mean, there are, I, I can't, couldn't find anything in that list, that, and there's nothing else. There's nothing else. This is all. This is all of it. He created all of it. And he did it for his own purpose. And now he's worked in your heart, giving you a, a new man so that you'll, you're compatible with him. And now he can fellowship with you. 
Unless God creates, we're all dead men. Unless God creates, gives you a new man, you're all dead men. You're not, I mean, in other words, you, you, you can't respond to God. That's Being dead means you can't respond to the world. They've got to put you in the ground. You don't respond anymore. Nothing there. God comes along. What do you do? He creates. He, he puts you into Christ. And now he can, you can relate to God. God creates worlds. He makes new hearts. He creates a way in the desert. We know that. He makes all things new. He establishes. He empowers. He enlightens. He alone can make a decree and set the bounds of the sea. Only God can do that. You think the water stays back just because it wants to? It can't go any further because God said no. You can go this far. Why? Because God's a creator. He created it. You can't go any further than that water. You just stop there and it says amen. I, I'll just, I'm just going to here. Sometimes God says, go a little further today. Yeah. Go a little further today. Let's, let's. And we read about a flood. What happened? God allowed it. He allowed it. The creator has the power to, to do what he wants. How about this one? God. How about this? Isaiah 57, 19. I create the fruit of the lips. This is God now. This is the creator. So now you, you thought, well, I, said, I really got some, something good to say tonight. I really got, I create the fruit of the lips. Amen. You, you, you've been thinking some really good thoughts? Give God the glory. I create the fruit of the lips. You, you, you thought it. God was with you in the thinking. And then he assists you to be able to share it. Oh, I create the fruit of the lips. You come up with some good things. Give God the glory. Amen. How about this? Peace. Peace to him that is afar off and to him that is near, near saith the Lord. And I will heal him. Now, now think about this. Have you, had a, have you had a peaceful day? You've had a peaceful day. God creates peace. That's what God, you, 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 God, will, God will create some peace. I know I need some peace sometimes. Sometimes I get all riled up. I got to ask God, create some peace in me. I don't want to be like this. Oh, I want to be peaceable. I want to live a peaceable life in this world. He can do it. it says, but the wicked, the wicked are like a troubled sea. When it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt, there is no peace, saith God, to the wicked. In other words, I won't let them have peace. I won't. They, they want to. They want to cause a bunch of trouble and then sit back and watch it. God said, I won't let them have peace. I won't. God can just speak a word. Just speak a word and your trouble will be over. And he can also just speak a word and you can have grace to go through the trouble. Yeah. See, this is our God now. He, he knows what is best. See, I have to confess, I don't know what's best. I don't know if it's best for the, to, for the trouble to end or for me to have grace to pass through the trouble. But I know one thing. I know that God knows. Amen. Whatever circumstance you find yourself in, if you can look to God in faith, he'll either end the trouble or he'll grant you grace to be able to glorify him in the midst of the trouble. Amen. And that really is what we want, see? Amen. We want to glorify God in whatever, whatever decision he gives. We want it. Now, we know that he's, see, the thing is, is that to be able to know that he's able to do that. See, now that's the victory. It's just, I know, I go to him. I go to my God because he can, he can give me peace, right? And I can sing at midnight in the prison if I know God. So really, which is harder for God? Is it harder for God to end the trouble or it is for it give you grace to be able to endure it? Well, I suggest both of them are impossible for men. They can't manage either one of those things. But God can do either one. Remember, we talked about it this morning. Those men that lowered, lowered the man down to Jesus. Jesus makes a point of this. Which is harder? Which one for me to take away his sins? Or for me to tell him to take up his bed and walk. Now, wh which one? Well, both of them are impossible for men. Both of them are. But I like what he says. He, he puts them on the spot. He puts them on the spot because he already knows what's in the heart of these men. 
he already knows. He said there were certain of the scribes sitting there, reasoning in their heart. Huh. Reasoning. They didn't say it out loud. They were just thinking about it. Jesus, is the, he sees this. What, which one? Put them on the spot now. Which one's harder? Come on, tell me. Tell me which one's harder. See, Jesus already knew. It, before that day was, was done, this is what they said. We never saw it on this fashion. We never saw it like this. Jesus, Jesus will, he, he has the ability to be able to create these kind of conclusions to where people can see it. They can't deny that he, he was, stood up, took up his bed, and walked away. How are they going to deny that? Well, then Jesus put them on in the position to where then they had to come to some kind of conclusion in their mind, whether or not they said it or not, that he can also take away sin. See, he forced that issue. Why? God created it. He created this, this circumstance. God created this, this environment where Jesus could, could make this proclamation. Oh, I tell you, that you got to think of it like this. Now, this man endured this trouble all these years so God could make this point right then. That's why he was infirmed all these years. I tell you, he'll get paid back for that in the glory. He, 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 endured, he was like a living testimony. That Jesus can take away sin. Well, this is a glorious thing. You think about it, so are you. You're a living testimony. God's given you a testimony. You were once darkness, and now you're light? Yeah, just come to me. I'll tell you about Christ that can take away your sins. I can tell you about living in darkness. I, I was there. I lived in darkness, but I'm not there anymore. I'm walking in the light as he is in the light. What happened? Jesus happened. See, the creator created a way. God creates every situation. See, it's not just like something, something's come upon you and it's like, oh, what am I? For us, we say, oh, what am I going to do? But now God isn't wringing his hands up there wondering, how can I bring the sons home? How am I going to get him home? No, that's not God. Known under God are all his works, all from the beginning. See, God knows what he's going to do. The question is whether or not we know what God's going to do. That's what... This is what preaching is all about. You apprise the people of, of, a, of a God that's able. We have a God that's able. I mean, there's so many. I could just spend lots of time. And I, I had to cut myself off here because you could spend a lot of time going through each circumstance where God created a way. And it's over and it's over and it's over where it looked like, it looked like it was impossible. There was no way for men to be able to fix this. There's no solution for men. And God steps in and he creates a way. Amen. See, we all, we all have experienced this. We, we've had these trials. And in, in, in the trouble, he creates a way of escape. Amen. He creates it. Now, you know, you get in that trouble again, and it, it won't be the same way to escape. Uh -huh. Why doesn't it work like that? Because he creates the way. With the temptation, he creates a way. He makes it. Now, you know, Daniel and these three Hebrew children, you've got to read through all, all, all the, the text there. And they got, it seemed like they were in such circumstances as impossible. Daniel's in a lion's den with a bunch of hungry lions. Now, what is, how are you going to write that down for people to follow? When you get in the lion's den and, and you're with hungry lions, you do this. Well, that's what he found himself. And, and it wasn't like Daniel was over there causing trouble. Daniel wasn't a troublemaker. That's right. No, he, in fact, he's, he's one of the governors, right? Or one of the. But he, he refused. He refused to deny his God. That got him in trouble. But when that got him in trouble, God got him out of trouble. You see, when he, he was true to what he knew about God, he was true to, to, to worship his God, and when, when that got him in trouble, then God stepped in. And, and um, God shut the mouth of the lions. Well, that wasn't anything Daniel did. Daniel knew it. And they had three Hebrew children. Now, how are you going to work this one out? You say, well, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm writing a little manual for the saints where they can figure life out. When you find yourself in a fiery furnace, do this. Quickly, by the way. The men that threw him in, they didn't even live. The men that this threw, they took him in, just threw him in, and they fell down dead. It was so hot. How were they going to get? They were, 
they actually weren't looking for a way out. You read the text again. They weren't looking for a way out. They were looking for a way to glorify their God. Amen. That's what they were. They said, they said, we're not careful. We're not careful to answer you. We're not going to do it. We're not going to bow down to you, whether we die or whether we live. Yeah. We're not going to do it. But be it known. <laughs> Our God, can he can deliver us. But if he chooses not to, we're not bowing and we're not bending. We're not doing that. They were faithful to their God, and when it came right down to it, their God was faithful to them. What happened? God created a way. He did it. So, I mean, like I said, you could go, you could really, this could be like a series of how God delivers people. What we find in these records of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, that as they were called to pass through various circumstances, that would, men would say, this is impossible. With men, this is impossible. Because they trusted in God, because their faith was, in, was already rooted in God, he brought them through. He made a way that he, he could get a name for himself and they wouldn't be ashamed. Well, if God can create a way through a fiery furnace, he can create a way through your fiery trial. He can do it. it, it, it you know, everyone that's ever passed through a fiery trial knows that in the middle of the trial is not when you want to acquire faith. It's before. It isn't the time to get resources when you're in the middle of a trial. It's the time to use them. Amen. Yes, amen. So which is harder? To create a way for natural men to pass through a Red Sea with the Egyptian army behind you? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 is it, is it hard, or is it, how about to destroy the Egyptian army in the sea? How are you going to get that, either one of those done? The Egyptian army's got to be destroyed, otherwise they're going to catch up with them. And so God creates this, <laughs> he works this out to where it looks like Israel's up against this water. It ain't going nowhere. They're just, they're there. God says, Tell the people to go forward. <laughs> but there's water here, Lord. Tell the people to go forward. And they did, didn't they? They did. They went forward. The water parted. They went forward. And Egyptians, they assayed. They, thought, they reasoned it out. They can go through the water. We can go through the water too. There you go. Bad decision, by the way. They get, in the, they get in the middle. Now, Israel, we know when Israel got out of the water, the, the pillar of fire was holding them back. <laughs> and they let them get about to the middle. Then God troubled them. He, troubled, he looked at them through the fire, through the pillar. He looked at them. He troubled them, took off their wheels. Now, you know, if they had been smart at that point in time, they might have turned back. But no, it says they drove them harder. See, there's just some people who just won't learn. They just won't learn. So what did God do? He said, You're, now you've got right where I wanted you to be. You're right there now. And the water. God now tells Moses, stretch forward, stretch your rod out there now. We're going to convert. We're going to baptize all these Egyptians right now. I baptize them right now. And they were, they were all consumed, weren't they? They were all dead. The Israelites saw dead men wash up on the shore. And what did they say? Oh, okay. they started praising God, didn't they? Yes, right? They took the terms of the Lord, trying gloriously the horse and riders thrown into the sea. Why did they do that? Because, see, they knew God made a way. God delivered us. He destroyed our enemies. He broke off their teeth. Telling you, Amen. this is our Creator, just the one. So what says God, God's going on record. He's going to create a way for Israel to be saved. I, I, I like thinking about the day when Israel, God, God lifts, takes the veil off of Israel. Yeah. He lifts up His hand to Israel, and what are they going to do? They're going to run into Him. They're going to run up to us. What's holding them back now? 
God's put a veil. They don't see things right. Not yet. It's like a veil. But when he takes it away and he lifts up, they're going to run to him. Isaiah 45, 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without then. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens. Now, remember now, God's talking about saving Israel. And he brings his creative power into this thing. He brings the fact, I'm the one that created the heavens. Don't think for a second I can't do this. Bringing Israel is a small thing. I created everything. And I'm telling you. The same one that's done this is going to do something, and everyone's going to say, oh, oh, it's the Lord. In other words, they're going to see it. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret. In a dark place in the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. God's purpose to do this, and this thing will come to pass. Amen. This it will. Israel. God's going to turn iniquity away from Israel, away from Jacob. He's going to do it. And when he does it, oh, it's going to be life from the dead. Life from the dead. You, can you imagine I've tried to imagine this, and it's, ooh, it's quite exhilarating. They have a nation full of Pauls. Now, I'm not saying that's exactly what he's going to do, but see, it's a kind of exciting to have, in other words, to have a nation full of people that are fully 100% on fire for God. It's going to change the world. It's going to do it. People can disagree with me now, but they're not disagreeing with me. They're disagreeing with God. And the thing is, is that one of these days when it happens, they're going to have to say with their mouth, God was right. Amen. In the end, when we see all of the creation of God together, in the end, see, God has been creating, for, he created the world, but he didn't stop creating. He just kept on creating, kept on creating situations, circumstances, work things in people, work things out of people, work things in the environment. He's been working, working, working. And in the end, when all of his labors are seen when his people stand before him. They're, uh, everything that God's ever done is going to be brought to light. Oh, they're going to say, done all things well. Everything. I didn't understand it before. I have to testify. I didn't see how everything fit together. But now, Father, when I see it all, oh, you are God, and there's none like you. Amen. We serve a great God. We serve a God that's able to create things. <laughs> that's endless possibilities now. He can, from nothing, he can say, let there be light, and there's light. Now, in your own life, it doesn't seem impossible. So in some area, it just seems impossible. I want to make advancement, but this doesn't seem. God can do it. He's the creator. This is the God who said, let the firmament in the midst of the, of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. I don't know exactly how that works, but God does. He's the one who did it. He created it. So it works exactly the way that God wanted it to work. He's the one that said, let the earth bring forth grass and herbs yielding, and herbs yielding seeds and the fruit tree yielding after its cure. And it did it. It really did do it. It didn't argue with God. It didn't say, I don't think I can do that. It did it. Did a natural brute creation doesn't argue with God. It does exactly what it says. It says, I'm going to put you in bondage now. You didn't do anything wrong. Everything, when he created it, said it was very good. Now he turns to it. He says, I'm going to curse the ground for man's sake. I'm going to put you in bondage for a while. And the earth didn't say, why me? He did ex exactly what God wanted. He did it with a promise, didn't he? One of these days, I'm going to liberate you. And he will. See, God's, God's right in everything that he does. He's going to liberate. He's going to have a new heavens and a new earth. Where in dwelleth righteousness. Why? Because God's going to create it. He's, he's uh, technically already has. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again. That where I am, there you may be also. But it's already there.
Brethren, we've been called into, the, into fellowship, into the fellowship of God's dear son. This is what we've been called into this kind of a fellowship. God, now this is, I think we know, I, I, that God's, he's so much higher than, than us. How can you possibly understand God? You see what the, God's able and he's capable of doing is how can I possibly, because he gave us Christ. See, he put Christ there. He's a man, the man, Christ Jesus. So he, the word becomes flesh and dwells among us and he's tempted at all points like as we are yet without sin. And God sets a man at his own right hand. So I can know, I, I, I can fellowship with them now, son. See, you're, you're my go-between. You're the one I'm going to work through. I'm going to bring many sons to glory through you, son. And that's what Jesus has been doing. God technically gives you to Jesus, and Jesus gets you ready to meet God face to face, to where God can dwell in you. Why? Why? Why is this possible? Because God created the possibility. See, it wasn't any man that come up with this. We've been given... Already now, we've already been given the first fruits of the Spirit of God, and he is not ashamed to be called our God. This is the same God that's written our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. God wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, this is our God. Now, we've been joined to the Lord. We are one spirit. By the same God's grace, we've been chosen, called, justified, sanctified, and soon will be glorified. This is our God. This is the same God that's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, but they're in his Son. They're in his son now. So you, you want them? You got to get in Jesus. You got to walk in the spirit. You got to live with him. You got to follow the lamb. You got to, all, they're, they're all there though. They're there. They're for you. So you, you, you get them as you, as you live in Christ. Now, this is the same God that we praise and we extol and we glorify this great God. Why? Because we've seen to some extent that he's worthy of praise. This isn't pretend praise. See, praise is when you've seen something about God and it provokes a reaction in you, you can't help but praise God. You've seen he's great, he's mighty, and I want to praise him. Amen. Behold, God says in Revelation 21, 5, I make all things new. Now, as I've already said, the first fruits of this is already in you. You already have a, a new nature. You have a new capacity, a new, you want God. See, how does God create a desire for himself in you? He gives you a part of himself in the new creation. And you, you, you honestly want to know God. You crave to be one with the living God. He's, he's, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the Holy Spirit. I'll do it. I'll give you the comforter. Soon the trumpet will sound. And the scaffolding surrounded the new heavens and the new earth will fall away. Oh, and we'll, we'll find that we're compatible with the new heavens and the new earth. When flesh is stripped away from you and all you have is that new man and you're given a new body, it'll be welcome home, son. Welcome home. <laughs> all things are ready. Come to the feast. The same God that has raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly place with Christ Jesus is the same God that's bringing us to glory. Oh, he says it like this. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. See, the procedure is going to be the same in heaven. For all eternity, it's going to be the same. You get something from God, it's going to come through Christ Jesus. It's going to come through him. We're going, to, we're going to gain the benefits of what Christ purchased with his own blood forever. We're going to live with him. Well, thank, thank you, brethren, for your patience, and I praise God for God being a creator. Amen.